for the people of God to enter. Step out of the nest, spread your wings and soar, surrender. Fall to Jesus, fall fully in love. are on you. Thank you because you are the hope of the hands of the world. And so this morning we thank you for the supply of your spirit. We thank you for the spirit of illumination and the spirit of understanding, comprehension, the power to do in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all transit and the supply of your spirit. Blessed be your name, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Let's celebrate God, everybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Please greet your neighbor warmly, tell them you are happy to see them. Glory be to God forevermore. James chapter 3. I will read two places to start. James chapter 3, I will just read through it quickly. Like I said this morning, I will take a bit of time. Glory be to God forevermore. But it will not just be wasted time, be useful time in Jesus' mighty name. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers. Knowing that we shall receive what? A stricter what? Judgment. Why is that? Because teachers are always talking. Teachers are always talking. And when you talk a lot, either by way of instruction, or by way of teaching, or by way of general discussion, anybody that teaches, more is expected of you. That's why the Bible says we shall be judged with what? Stricter what? Judgment. Go on, verse 2. For we all stumble what? In many things. All of us. It doesn't matter who you are. We all stumble, not, not in few things. We all stumble what? In many things. If anyone does not stumble what? In world. He now single out an aspect of stumbling. He call it stumbling what? In world. He said generally as human beings we stumble in many things. So Sometimes I forget your name. Sometimes I will not remember to pray. Sometimes we stumble in many things. Sometimes we eat what we are not supposed to eat. We stumble in many things. Sometimes we choose a wrong career. Are you hearing me? For some of us, may God forbid, some, 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 some people marry wrong people. We stumble in many things. Sometimes some of us, let me leave that alone. We, 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 we befriend people we are not supposed to befriend. People you are not supposed to confide in, you go and confide in them. We stumble out in many things. We offend many people without even knowing. Somebody will just happy with you. Go wonder what have I done? And then until you find out, all the the magnets are going to tell you. We stumble in many things. But the Bible says, now single out of all of our stumbling says, but if any man does not stumble what in world, is what is a perfect man. It's a matured man. You can stumble in your cooking. You may miss out, you may cook your food and your food will get burnt. It doesn't define your maturity. Say, but there's one that defines a man's maturity. The way a man talks. Says, if anyone does not stumble in word, it's what? It's a matured man. That word perfect doesn't mean sinless. It means what? Matured, fully grown man. Hallelujah. Give me that place in the what? In TPT, so you can understand. Or NIV, anyone you see. Okay. Yeah. Look at what it says. We fail in many things, but especially in our words. Yet, if, if we are able to bring our words, we say, uh, we say we are powerful enough to control ourselves in every way. And that means our character is what? Mature. And fully what? Developed. That's what a perfect man means. Fully what? Matured. Hallelujah. Not sinless. Go back to King James Version where I'm, uh, New King James Version I was reading verse 3. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Indeed, we put what? Bits in the in horse's mouth that, we may, that they may obey us and we turn their whole body. How many of you know how big horses are? Huge. Right? Say better. Say you can control it. 
you put those bits. Don't say that. Hook the mouth. You put it there. Say, if you can use it very well, you will control the whole body. Hallelujah. So, then verse 4. Look at what it says. Look at sheep. Huge sheep. Although they are so large and driven by fierce wind, they are torn by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Our life, our destiny, marriage, children, so many great things about us. You say you can control it by a small rudder. By this thing. You can control it. Hallelujah. Like it says, in case you are wondering what is he talking about, we could talk about we're thinking about what is beats that control the horse. What is this rudder that controls the sheep? He said, even so, it's what is the tongue. Tongue is the rudder, the tongue is the beat. Hallelujah. Amen. So, even so, tongue is a little member and both great things. See how great a forest, uh, a forest is fire kindles. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. The tongue is so, set, is so set among our members that it defies the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by what? By hair. Go, verse 7. For every kind of beast and bird, uh, what of every reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by what? By mankind. Verse, verse 8. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Verse 8. He said, The tongue can no man tame. And I, I remember telling you, when the Bible says the tongue can no man tame, tame, it's not referring to you. When it says no man, it's talking about no natural man. Are you hearing me? Not a spiritual man. So when the Bible talks about man, don't put yourself among. You are a new creation. You know why this is so? Because Scriptures must interpret scriptures. If you say, how can you say, okay, a tongue cannot man tame, right? Therefore, I can talk anyhow. Therefore, I can abuse anybody that can look at my dad and say, Daddy, you are very stupid. And say, Are you okay? Say, the tongue cannot man tame. <laughs> or you go and meet your boss. Say, Boss, you are very stupid, sir. And the man says, What? He said, The tongue cannot man tame. He said, Pastor, you are very foolish. And I said, you talking to me like that? I said, yes. Tongue cannot maintain. It's an unruly evil. You can, you can see that that was not even sound way. Hallelujah. A tongue cannot maintain. Even you know naturally that you can tame your tongue. But only like it doesn't last. It's momentary. It doesn't last. You can tell me your tongue. Uh, it's because they've not slapped you. Have you. There is a slap that you will control. Are you hearing me? But only momentary. So they never slap you. You will control yourself. It's when pity has not entered the body of a child. That's why we say, no go better for you. When, when, child, when pity enters a child, you say, well, what did I do, sir? What did I do? Now beg you go to beg. Somebody beat your junior sister. I say, who beat you? He says, it's that man. Say, let's go there. I will show you. And you are following him. And you see a man sitting on top of a rock with his muzzle like this. 6.4. 6. It is sugar cane. And he just do, wow, wow, with his teeth. And he says, who beat you? He says, that man. He says, you two, you, they talk too much. I've been warning you. Stop insulting other people. Let's go back up, Jare. You will control yourself. But it's what? It is momentary. It is situational. Who can control tongue on a permanent basis? Only a spiritual man can do it. Because if it's not that way, the Bible will not tell us to do so. Hallelujah. Let me show you a few scriptures and I'll begin to rush. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. Is tongue independent of your, of your body? No. Babu says it's a unruly member of the body. It's part of the body. The day your tongue is outside of you, we need to call either Dr. Seko, Dr. Lara, or call two of them together, or call National Emergency, call NEMA. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Timothy, chapter 1. Your tongue is part of your body. You can control your body. Look at what it says. Second Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. Verse 7, verse 7. Let me go clearly read some scriptures for you. Hallelujah. 
So we'll continue the teaching next week, but I will take some time this morning. He said, look at what it says here. Let's go together, everybody. Let's go together. For God has not given us what? The spirit of fear, but of power of love and of faith. Give me this in NIV. NIV, please. Or I will read this one. What did it say here? For the spirit God gave us does not what? Make us what? Timid. But gives us what? Power, love, and what? And self-discipline. Hallelujah. Self-discipline. Tell you, anybody have the spirit of power? Love? And self-discipline. CPT causes self-control. Whereby you control yourself. If you can control yourself, you are also controlling your tongue. You can do it. The spirit is given to us to enable us to do that. Glory be to God forevermore. Galatians chapter, two, chapter 5, verse 22. We have the spirit of self-control, including tongue. We can control our tongue. Because we are, we are children of God, we have the spirit of God inside of us. Look at what it says here. But the fruit of the spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Gentleness, what? Self-control. The Holy Spirit inside us is the spirit of what? Self-control. We can control the tongue. That's what I'm saying. That is the point I'm trying to make over there. We can control it. Or the only thing we need to learn is how, but we can't. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 9. I just had to reinforce that, that belief in us that we can't. Don't be telling me I can't. I pass, I can't help myself. You can't help yourself. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of what? Self-control. Glory be to God forevermore. The problem is that most, most, of, most of us are not ready to be yielded to the spirit. We are ready to give expression to our flesh, not give expression to our spirit. Glory be to God forevermore. Inside your spirit is what? The spirit of what? Self-control. Not pastor control. Not others controlled. Self. If you behave yourself when people are there and, and you say when people are not there, you, don't, you are not exercising that spirit. The best way to show maturity is that when people are not there and you are able to check yourself. That's self-control. Self-control. That's why it's not the duty of a pastor to come and be telling people what to wear. It, we, it can come under general instruction, but it's not for me to take cane and say, Kai, your, your skirt is too short. Your hair is too white. You know? No, 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 no. There's a spirit that teaches you. That's what that teaches you. Call self control. Hallelujah. It's called self control. Glory be to God forevermore. And let me tell you something about self-control. Because, Kai, God help me. You know what? Let me just go at my own pace. Eh? I want her to rush. Let me just go gradually. Thank you, man. You know, I want to beg you about something. Eh? When it comes to life, life is holistic. It's not isolated. You cannot say, I'll decide to be fine in this area and be bad in this area. If you are bad in one area, it will affect The Bible says a little yeast corrupts the whole lump. You get our sense right now. Life is holistic. What I'm trying to say in essence is this. If you are talking bad, it will affect your marriage, it will affect your future, it will affect everything. In fact, it will affect your decision making. If you don't have self-control, it will affect many things. You will just say that you, you are losing relationship after relationship. You are wondering what is the matter. Some, maybe, maybe your behavior, maybe your reaction, maybe certain things about yourself that nobody is willing to confront you and tell you But we are quick to point at others. So. We are quick to point at others. Do you know something? Let me tell you something that will help you this morning. Do you know if you have a lot of self-discipline, self-control, and you are able to align yourself, it's very hard for somebody to mislead you. Oh my God. 
I'm teaching better this morning than you are responding. It's very difficult. Are you hearing me? Because if certain things are together, hmm, let me tell you, eh, please borrow me all this cup, all these things. Let me, please borrow me all the water. But please, thank you, Pastor DJ. Oh, yeah, thank you, Pastor Sarah. Arrange this. Is a, let's say this is, you know, arrange it on a straight line. On a straight line. Yeah, straight line. Aha. If this is your life, you are a man well put together. Hmm? You are one well, well put together. By the time somebody, a funny person, a funny character, a demonic person comes to your life and does moves this, this way, it's, you are already out of character. Something in you will rebel against this. Because your life, you know how your life operates. But if you are like this, if Satan comes and knocks this one off, what effect does he make? Because you are not together before, so it's easy to introduce corruption. That's all. So nobody will come here and tell me that somebody misled somebody who misled you. Who misled you? They said Satan tempted Judas. But Judas was stealing me for that time. It was not a weakness in him that Satan exploited. Let us stop all this nonsense. So we have self control. Are you hearing me? We have self-control. We can't control ourselves. Somebody come and say, hey, baby, blame me or that. Stop it. Have I offended anybody here this morning? That's how it works. We have to apologize to this water for scattering the waters. Because the water was sitting there on their own. We went and took, scattered the water. Sorry, well, thank you for applying. the water. I, I asked on behalf of the water. As, uh, apology accepted. <laughs> Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter, chapter, chapter 1. Wow. Oh, I didn't read first Corinthians, right? Okay, let's read it. Verse 27. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Take the water. Don't let the water pour under the our electrical stuff. That will be greater damage than the... Thank you. Me, I've opened my own. No, don't give me somebody else's water. I've opened my, I think my own is a little a hard. I know my water. My water knows me. Yeah. <laughs> you can give the rest. They've not opened their own. Nobody dares drink when I'm preaching. I try it. I will sack you now. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Guys, they go ahead. I play too. Anyway, shall let's go. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, let's go. <laughs> Look at what this man says. But what? I discipline what? My body. Tell your neighbor, I need, I need to discipline my body. Once I discipline my body, my tongue will be disciplined. It's simple. He said, what? I discipline what? My... Did he say God discipline my body? I've always told you. The day you allow God to discipline you, you are dead. One day I will show you for scripture. Some of you don't understand scriptures. You say, God Almighty, touch me, discipline me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what he says? He says he's a rock. He said the best way to do is that everybody should fall on him. The Bible says when you fall on him, you'll be broken to pieces. So that he can mend you. But if you allow him to fall on you, he will grind you to powder. Discipline in the kingdom of God is voluntary. If you allow God to do it, you may not live to survive it. You may not live to testify of it. That's why grace is given to everybody to repent and make adjustment. So now, if you, got, if you allow God, <laughs> me, I've told you now. <laughs> Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Say, I discipline my body. You can do it. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 1. And I quickly go to what I now begin to touch on ways to discipline. But let me read Hebrews chapter 1 first. Verse 3. Or oh, let me just read from verse 1. It doesn't take us, it doesn't take us a lot. God, who what? No, no, go to 11. 
Time, who, who spoke to us? Time will go. Please, don't worry. Please. Time will go. I'll come to this later. Go to 11. I'll come to this later. How you will use knowledge of Christ to control what you say. But I'll come to that. I'll come to that later. How many of you know that there, are, there is a way you will train your children? That when you are not there, they will just reflect the home. The people call them and say, we don't talk like that. From My parents say, we don't talk like that. That value will follow them. That's the way you understand Christ. That's what I want to show you here, Betty. I will come to it. Look at what they say. Hebrew what? 11. I didn't say chapter 1, but I said chapter 11. That's what I said. I didn't say Hebrew 1, 11. Hebrew 11. I'm reading from verse 1. Now faith is what? Is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things what? Not seen. When you come to my Bible school, I will teach you that that place is not a definition of faith. It's a description of faith. People always define that at it. What you mean, what, what's faith? Faith is the evidence of not seen. The, mm, it's a description. It's not a definition. It's like saying aircraft is that thing that has two wings. Birds also have two wings. Everything that has two wings is not a definition of aircraft. Let's go. Bible says, by it, what? The elders obtain what? A good testimony. If elders obtain a good testimony, what would church members do? Okay, let's go. I'm just joking. This is where I'm going. By faith, we understand well, what? That the worlds, the times, and the seasons of life were framed by what? By the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made by the things which are visible. Some of you think that your future will reflect how much money you are earning right now. You think that your future will reflect your certificate you earn. That, no, no. Bible says the things that are seen will not come from the things that are visible. They will come from what you are saying. For we understand the words were framed, put together what? By the word of God. Do you get what we are saying right now? Let us train our children not to focus on too much things. Because things can get corrupted. Things can go down. But when we get to teach them that your future is not dependent on what you are doing too much, but on what you are saying and framing your future. Because the visible comes from the invisible. Tell your neighbor, I will make it. I will end well. In Jesus' mighty name. Are you hearing me? Let somebody be doing whatever they are doing and be doing PhD in cinematography and electronic craft, whatever they are doing. Let them be talking trash. Everything they are putting together will come to naught. Glory be to God forevermore. Let's teach our children where the real life comes from. Glory be to God forevermore. I'm not, they are telling your children to be lazy. No. Let them work, let them read the best courses. In fact, I challenge everybody. I don't let any of your children read any course that they can that they that will need that they will need employment. Let all of them read professional courses. Professional courses, so that in case jobs are not coming, they can create something by themselves. Don't don't make mistake that we made because there was nobody to guide us. We can guide them. Hallelujah. The truth, the truth is a doctor will not be living God for job as much as somebody that read both things. You understand what I'm saying? Some of you are not listening to me. Are you listening? You won't have to believe God too much if you read if you read doctor, you to call it. If you read mercy, sorry. There's someone that read both things. You may want to do Baba Are you hearing? <laughs> Glory be to God forever, mom. We understand that the world was framed by the word of God. Glory be to God forever, man. May you frame something good with your mouth. May your life become good and sweet. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say with me, I wouldn't I will have to pay for everything I need. Favor of God sponsors me. Hallelujah. Let us say something again. Say the future, the future 
In fact, that is not correct. Say, my future, my future is, better is better than my present. Than my present. Things, Things are working, are working together, together for my good. For my good. Nothing, Nothing works, works against me. Against me. Policies, policies, government policies, government laws, laws, none of them None. will ever, ever work, work against me. Against the economy, the, economy, the value of Naira, Job situation will never work against me. I'm above only. I'm not beneath. I am the head. I'm not the tail. In the name of Jesus. My needs are fully supplied. Because my father is the author and the creator of the universe. And he, my father, takes good care of me. me. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We talk, that's how we talk. Say, future, Future. I am not afraid of you. I I am coming coming in grand style. style. My God God has has gone gone ahead of me. me. Making Making crooked places places. straight. Straight. Bringing down Mountains, Mountains. exalting Exalting. valleys, Valleys. straight path path. are made made for me. me. Amen. Amen. That's how we are talking. That's how we talk. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. So, how do we tame the tongue? I've tried to show you from the scriptures that it can be tamed, we can discipline our body. So how do we tame the tongue? I will tell you seven. So let me start today by telling you one or two. We will continue next week. Is that alright? Because it's not enough to know that we can. Let us tell ourselves how. Number one is very simple. Just ask God to help you. Without his help, we can do nothing. Ask God to help you. And indeed, if you are sincere with that Petition to God. God will help you. You will just see that you change without knowing how you are changing. You just see that your reaction, the thing you used to say, they, they don't, you know, why, you know why? Because God is working in you. Ask God to help you. A woman effort and say, no, I determine, I console, I propose, will not work. Ask God to help you. Glory be to God forevermore. Isaiah chapter 6. I don't know whether it's Isaiah. Is it 6 or 5? Let me, I will know. If I read 6, if I know, I'll go to 5. It's 6, I'm correct. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. That's, I'm reading from verse 1. Sitting on a, on a throne. High and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled what? The temple. Please, when the Bible talks about the temple, one day we'll talk about during my, my Hebrew next year, teaching the book of Hebrew next year. I will describe to you the throne of God. We will get to that place. And if I will come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. Abi, into the company number of angels, general assembly, the church of God, we are written in heaven. That's a throne. This Bible says the capacity of the throne of the church of God cannot be named. The Bible says innumerable company of the... So you cannot say it's a 50,000 seater capacity. It's not a 1 million seater capacity. Innumerable. You know what that means? The temple or the throne is ever expanding. For as many as needs can come. Somebody get you what I'm trying to say right now. Bible says, and his throne filled that temple. Look at the next one. Above it stood seraphim. Which is seraphim is pulled out seraph. Are you hearing me? Okay. Each one had what? Six wings. Two covered his face, two covered his feet, and with two what? He flew. Go on. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse 4. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, 
Look at what he said. Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man what of unclean leaves. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves, for my eyes have seen the king and the, the lord of hosts. The man recognized, look, I am not talking right. Because when you see the holiness of God, everything about that you is hidden becomes manifest. Look at verse 6. When the man acknowledged and said, look, I am not doing right with my lips. Look at what God did. Then one of the seraphim seraf flew to me. Had he in his hand word a life coal, which he had taken with, it, with, it, with tongues from the altar. You tongues and took it from the altar, which is a representation of what Christ has done. One day I will have time to teach you all these things. You know, when you come to the temple, first, the first thing you see, you see the brazen altar, you see the washing basin, you see all those things and everything. The beginning of everything in the temple starts from the altar where Christ was crucified. That is the beginning. If you start Christ, you cannot enter the temple. That's the beginning. It's at the door. Glory be to God forevermore. So he said, he went and fetched a tongue from the finished work. He went and fetched what? A coal. A life coal. And he did what? And the Bible said, Behold, look, look, go back, go back. Let's go back to verse 6. We are jumping. With what Bible said, he flew. And what? He took a life coal from the altar with a tongue. Okay? Go on. And he touched what? My mouth with it. And said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is poor. May the fire touch you. Amen. He said, You are trying to cleanse your tongue. He said, You cannot do it. There is a fire that produces it. There's flows from the altar. You know how long you say, I don't want to do this? Then something triggers you and you are surprised at what comes out of your mouth. But may the fire touch you today. Amen. He says he ran and the only one took, took, and took the tongue and touched his mouth. Glory be to God forevermore. Verse 8 and I, I stop. And so I heard the voice of the Lord. You look at what he says here. He <laughs> says, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, one word, send me. Now my word can align with your word. When I stand, I can represent you. I can talk for you. I can say what you want me to say. Either to an individual, in my family, to my wife, to my husband, to my children, to my friends, to my colleagues, in my church, in my place of work. I can stand and say, Here I am, send me. You know why? Your coal of fire has touched me. Is somebody understand what I say right now? It's not by determination. It's not by saying, oh, no, I propose, I determine. They never provoke you enough. You'll be shocked at what will come out of you. But when the fire touches you, from the altar, but the man started by saying, oh God, I am a man of unclean lips. Help me. Glory be to God forever. Psalm 19, as I close this morning. I've only told you one, Abby. Don't worry. We'll continue next week. Father, in the name of Jesus, we we'll thank you. We we'll receive coal of fire. In the name of Jesus. Touching our tongues. So that we can be representative of you. So we can say, Oh Lord, here am I. Send me. I will speak for you. I will represent you. My reaction will be godly. I will react the way you will react. When I speak, it will be like as if God himself has shown up. May matters not come before you, come to you. And when that matter leaves you, it becomes hotter than it came. You know how godly people talk? When matters come before them, by the time that matter is leaving them, it has doused. The temp temperature has come down. Because the peace of God in your heart has prevailed over that situation. Is somebody here what I'm talking about right now? Whew. John, turn to verse 12 so we can land up. 
Look at what he says there. Who can understand what is errors? Look at what he says. Cleanse me from what secret faults. May God cleanse every one of us from secret faults. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That man will say, oh God, I have my unclean lips. God says it's not about your lips, it's about your mouth. Keep back your servant from what? From presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. We are asking God for help. Are you hearing me? Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Look at all this, what it was called presumptuous sin, what I don't know about, uh, secret fault. You know what it boils down to? Verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and what and the meditation of my heart we will all be acceptable in your sight. That is the end matter. All this we call secret for everything you say it is about what the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart. What are you thinking towards me as we are sitting there? What am I thinking towards you as we are sitting there? Where you are not there, what am I saying about you? Hey! Meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth may be acceptable. My strength and what are my redeemer. That is how it works. This is how it works. Do we get something here this morning? Honestly, that's how it works. Hallelujah. May my word build you up. May your word build me up. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my life and I thank for my brothers and my sisters, for all our pastors, for all our elders. I thank you for every worker in the epignosis, all the members, all our children. We receive coal from your altar this morning, touching our hearts, purifying our mouths. In the name of Jesus, let the words of our mouth, let the words of our mouth, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me finish by telling you this. The reason, go back to verse 14. Why it must be two. Why it must be what? The word of our mouth and what? The of our heart. Because the two of them are connected. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If it's about your mouth alone and the heart is not purified, the same pollution will continue. Because God works in us what? both to will and to do. He works in us. Glory be to God forevermore. So that tells me sometimes I land up this morning. The way God fixes your mouth is by fixing your heart. A man who carries hell, who carries hell in his heart, cannot speak peace with his mouth. You can't carry hatred in your heart and speak love from your mouth. Bible calls that hypocrisy. That is why all my sister, when you want to fall in love, don't fall in love with their mouth. Fall in love with their heart. What is their heart towards you? A man who knows how to say the right word with a wrong heart is still wrong. Say, so don't worry, I'm going to treat you like a rose and take you to roses. If you have started the girl, this, uh, uh, this nonsense, uh, they, with, uh, uh, they have forgotten that roses have tongues. Have you? Mm-hmm. Let me leave you. Hallelujah. Because after all said and done, it boils down to the heart. That is why you must ask help from God. If just about sand that our mouth produces, technicalities can fix it. We can be technical. But if you want to deal with the root, it's the heart. 
Do you know something? My sisters and my brothers, you know something? If the heart is right, and even the word comes out wrong, you will still, you will still, you will still understand that there's a disconnect somewhere. People will not take it strongly against you. If you are glued to your wife, and your wife knows that you love her, and you say some wrong things, they will not take it bad. Because they know it's coming from a good heart. But you are a cacophonous man. I don't know. What English am I going to use this morning? You know? Yeah! Thank you. I know you are well, you are well schooled. With your glasses, you, you look it. You know, you are a cantacarous, a cacophony man. A, 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 a John Dees. <laughs> a caputius man. Your heart is just strong. When we will sit straight right, the right, everybody surprised. Say, hey, <laughs> you? That's why your wife doesn't believe you. Because your heart is a heart of trouble. Kai. Did somebody get something here this morning? So where we will fix, where God fixes, where we say God touch me, is your heart. That's why after you have prayed this prayer for some time and God has touched you, you will just realize that if you want to do something, you can't do it anymore. You can't say something anymore. Why? It, the free change has happened. Look, I leave you this morning. God bless you. God keep you. God keeps his cause co- 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 to shine upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, God, God is fixing my heart. my heart. Hallelujah. My words are right. Because my heart is right. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. And I commend every one of you to God. After the word of his grace. Which is able to beat you up. And give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Let's be God forevermore in Jesus' mighty name. We are prayed. Amen. Let's celebrate God, everybody. Hallelujah! There remains a rest for the people of God to enter. Step out of the nest, spread your wings and soar, surrender. Epignosis, concise knowledge.